Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Thierry, president of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to make worlds within 3D Invigorator. It's actually a pretty simple process. This is a kind of a short tutorial. So let's uh, dive right into it. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new layer here in Photoshop. And we're going to turn that into a smart layer. So we'll say convert to smart object. And I always like to do this with 3D Invigorator because when I save the Photoshop document, uh, no matter when I come back to the document at a later date, whether it's a week from now or six months or a year, I can, I can make adjustments to 3D Invigorator because it's applied to a smart object. And I'll go over exactly what that means uh, pretty shortly. But just know that we're on a smart layer and when I apply 3D Invigorator, it's going to get applied as a smart filter. And in this case, since we're trying to create a world, we're going to start with a 3D primitive. Specifically, I want to start with a sphere, because most planets are shaped like a sphere. And we're going to go ahead and move in here. Just zoom in on my sphere that I have going on. So the first thing I need to do here is click on the color chip here next to color. And what that's going to allow me to do is select a texture map. And in this case, I have a very cool texture map from NASA, which is part of their blue marble series of high resolution texture maps, which can be downloaded from NASA's site. And I'm just going to jump out to my web browser and show you that. So you can Google Visible Earth NASA, or just type in visibleearth.nasa.gov. And you can see that you've got some sections here. And we can click on the blue marble, and you'll see all the different texture maps that you can download, or at least some of them. And these are all very high resolution. 8,000 pixels wide if you want them. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to be using a 2,000 pixel wide one. But they go up to 8,000 pixels. And not only can you get regular looking Earth maps, if we go back here, you can see that the Earth City Lights map is also available. And we're going to be using this one very shortly as well. The Land Ocean Ice Lights. It's a very, very cool texture map for creating uh, planets. But again, all this stuff is available on NASA's Visible Earth site. So it's visibleearth.nasa.gov. And they have lots of very cool texture maps that you can use with 3D Invigorator or other 3D programs or just use them within Photoshop. So I'm going to switch back to 3D Invigorator. And you can see that the Earth texture map has been applied, but in this case, the material is not applied to my object, so I need to drag the material onto my sphere, and voila, we have the Earth. And if we do a render test, we can see what that looks like. Looks very Earth-like. We can rotate that around, see different parts of it. Let's uh, get North America front and center here. And we'll do another render test of that. And it all looks good. Now one thing you might want to play around with is the lights. If we want realistic lighting for a planet, we probably don't want the backlights. So I'm going to go to light 2 and turn that off. And light 3, turn that off. And now I can see that my planet has a much darker side. Now, you might not want it quite so black on the back side here. It's really up to you. You can, of course, turn one of those lights back on and get a little bit of light on the back side. Actually, that is not the light we want to turn on. Light 3 is the light that we want to turn on. And I'm going to change that to white. Reduce the intensity. 
and do a render test and see where that gets us. So now we get a little bit of texture on the backside. It's not completely solid black. And that's all we need to do. So we can go ahead and render this out to Photoshop. And again, the key part of this is using a texture map for the color channel of your material and then taking that material and dropping it onto your sphere. With 3D, it's almost always about the texture maps and the NASA high resolution photos from their blue marble stuff provides us with great high resolution texture maps. And so now I'm going to click OK and go back out to Photoshop. And we've got a very nice looking planet Earth. All created within 3D Invigorator. Now, let's go back to the smart filter thing. Now, the great thing about smart filters, if I want to make changes to this, I can just double click on 3D Invigorator. And it's going to remember all of my settings. And this happens even if I come back to this, you know, a year from now. I can just open up my Photoshop project, double click on that 3D Invigorator smart filter, and it's going to pop open 3D Invigorator with all of the settings that creates that layer. Now, for example, I might want to rotate this around a little bit, get a slightly different look, and I might want to use a different texture map. So if I click on the RGB channel down here, actually if I double click on it, you can see that I can come in and select a different texture map. And in this case, I'm going to select my light texture map, which is the NASA Land Ocean Ice Lights image that I referenced earlier when we were looking at that site. And I'm going to have to drag and drop the material on there. And now we can see the Earth at night as it looks from space with all the lights of the cities and countries. And I can, of course, rotate that around again. So again, we're looking at North America. And click OK, and I'll render that back out to Photoshop. And now I have a night planet. Now you can see that we have a little bit of a problem in that we've got a specular highlight here, which, of course, the Earth isn't normally going to have. So if we want to fix that, we can again double click on 3D Invigorator. Again, this is not a permanent render. These are not permanent pixels. Because I've applied it as a smart filter, I can turn off 3D Invigorator and my globe goes away. If I turn it back on, it renders. And sure enough, there it is again. And if I double click on 3D Invigorator here, it's going to open up with all the settings I just had. So now I can come over to my material editor and turn off reflectivity, transparency, bump, specular. And we're going to turn highlight, sharpness, and brightness down to the lowest amounts. And again, I have to drag and drop that material on there. Now, if I was smart, I will have come over here to the material docs, seen my actual material, and then double clicked on that, and that will load this texture into the material editor, and every time I make a edit over here, it's going to be reflected on the object. So that's what you want to do if you're smart about how you edit your materials. You come over to the material docs, double click on that, and then make the adjustments in the material editor. And now if we run, do a render test on this, you'll see that there's no more specular highlight. I've turned off the specularity, I've turned off the reflectivity, and now when I go back out to Photoshop, that highlight that we have disappears. And so now I have a nice nighttime earth, and it looks pretty good. So that's really all there is to it. It's a very simple process if you want to create new worlds within 3D Invigorator. Just make use of the sphere primitive and then use one of the texture maps from NASA's site, the Visible Earth site, and you'll have some very cool planets that you can make. So thank you for joining me. Uh, we have a lot more tutorials on digitalanarchy.com along with free trials of 3D Invigorator. 
And we'll also post these maps up there as well to make it even easier to get access to them. So hopefully you'll find that as a useful resource and have enjoyed this. And good luck on your planet building.